Uh, Joe Petty, Mayor of the City of Worcester. Also work for uh, Mass Housing Retirement System. And uh, I'm a resident of Worcester, Massachusetts. So the mayor does a lot of the ceremonial stuff. It also sets the agenda, working with the school committee members and with the Worcester City Council. The mayor also runs the meeting uh, every Tuesday night, the Worcester City Council meeting, and twice a month, the school committee meeting. Keep the dialogue open, making sure people are talking, try to bring the parties together. I've been pretty good at that. There's always a little, um, you know, issues between the school department and the city side because the school department demands are great and the money's only so much. And you attend a lot of events, you're invited to a number of places on uh, days, nights, and weekends, and uh, it's interesting. You meet a lot of great people in this business. I was born over in the south, west over Hurd Street, Auburn Line, on Edlin Street, or the Haven Park area, and I grew up there. I went to Hurd Street School, then went to Worcester East Middle School, and uh, that was in the, right when busing was starting. It was the best experience of my life. I'm glad I did it. It took me out of my community and put me into another community because Worcester East Middle was more, they had <coughs> kids from all over the city, all different type of kids from different types of um, uh, countries, and so it was, a good, it was a good learning experience. Then I went to Hoyname High School, uh, went to Nichols College in Dudley, Massachusetts. Then a few years later, after graduating from there, I went to uh, New England School of Law in the city of Boston. So I decided to apply for law school. I'm glad I did. I almost didn't finish a few times. I tell that story, it's like, I've learned from law school, never give up. I was working full time and going at night, and I was I don't need this. You know, this is getting harder and harder. You stick it out, and that's my message I like to send to a lot of young kids. And, you know, Never give up. It was a good experience, a good degree to have, and uh, never really went to practice law. I did a little bit, you know, on the side for a law firm in Worcester, but uh, pretty much stayed in the career. I was, I was doing taxes at working for the Department of Revenue as a, in the law department there. Then I went to work for uh, All America Financial, which is now Hanover Insurance. Goldman Sachs purchased us, and they asked us to go with them, so I worked for Goldman Sachs for a couple years. Then I applied for this position to run the pension system at Mass Housing. I got in politics when I first ran in uh, 97. I had family members who were, uh, who had jobs in government and saw the fall of the political scene, but nobody in the elected office. And so I figured I'd run. I came in third. And uh, Tim Murray, I ran on the same ticket when Tim Murray was on. We didn't know each other, so uh, there was only one empty seat. And he had come in second. Ray Mariano was the mayor. He had come in first. And uh, so make a and I stuck with it as a city councilor and did it for a number of years. After 14 years, I ran for mayor. I'm in my 19th year now and 20th next year. Um, and it's been my third term as mayor. Um, and I'm glad I've done it. We're going out of our way to make sure that, uh, that job openings, we're going into the community, how to apply for jobs. I think we, I want more people that live in the city of Worcester, <laughs> work for the city of Worcester, because that makes a difference. That's how Worcester's going to be successful. If people think they're part of the community, they have some, uh, something in the game, you know, something that they're concerned with. Um, and, that, and that's what we, I've been trying to accomplish. The budget is always a challenge to make sure that we, you know, I pretty much support the manager when he brings in because he's got a lot of good programs. And, um, getting through the budget process where the schools aren't crucified and cut. I really believe are people are getting paid for what they're worth, right? And you look at the, what's left out there for good paying jobs right now, I hate to say it, you know, all those blue collar jobs when we were kids, they're gone. You know, those factory jobs, those, there was still some good jobs out there, but not as many as they, they were. Construction industry is like the manufacturing industry was, I think, years ago. There's the jobs. These guys are paying people $42 an hour, counting wages, benefit package, retirement, you know? I believe in unions. I think they do a good job. They provide good benefits. But I also believe in the companies that are here in the city of Worcester are non-union. We're paying their employees properly, giving them health insurance. And this is not all the contract. There's a lot of good contractors, but we do have contracts bringing people paying 9 bucks an hour, no, no benefits. We put some um, policies in place, uh, which causes some strife. We just passed, matter of fact, uh, the wage bill a couple weeks ago on the city council that's saying, hey, if we find you're not paying out your wages, what you're supposed to be, then, wait a minute, we want a bond for a year for that job. 
We don't want you. We bring more business here, more investors, more development. Don't stop the momentum, you know, because sometimes you get caught in the weeds. And, uh, you don't, and when you get caught in the weeds, you don't see the big picture, and you can make some bad decisions. And, uh, but I want to keep that momentum up. I want to make sure the neighborhoods are strong. We've invested a lot in the parks in the city of Worcester in the last few years. I want to continue that. We've put millions of dollars in streets and sidewalks. This city could um, potentially have $700 million in the, over the next, between the last five years or so and the next five years, maybe not completed, but locked for, you know, for the Worcester Public Schools. Worcester's changing, you know. A lot of the outsiders that come, it's good to have outside investment. Even the young kids, that's pretty big. Your younger community, college students, you want a reason to stay. We're starting to give them a reason to stay. I just want to see the quality of life for everyone. Everyone has access. Everyone. That we don't close our doors to anybody. We've had them since I've been on. Uh, they used to be called crime, they're called crime watch groups or neighborhood uh, group meetings, and uh, some are during the day, most are at night. And there's always a list of the police officer there. And, and if there's an issue being generated, we need another department head, they attend. And there's usually somebody from the city manager's office or the mayor's office will go and listen and uh, report back. And then, so they take down the complaints and the issues, and they re try to report back and the police will give a, they'll have a report of all the crime that was committed in that one month time frame or previous, and there were some issues and say, you had so many break-ins, this is what happened here. And the police officer will say, well, this is what happened, we arrested so-and-so. You get all these people, all these neighborhood leaders who really care about their city and they make a huge difference. They make my job easier, they come and tell you what the issues are, and they're not shy to yell at you a few times too, so. You get involved in the community, and uh, it could be social, it could be business, it could be coming to a neighborhood group meeting. Uh, we're always looking for people to join boards and commissions if you're interested in government. And help us, and tell us what you need. What do you want to see for activity at night? And what do you want to see in the arts? What do you want to see in transportation? And uh, what do you want to see in economic development? What kind of business do you want us to bring here in the city?